basically from the Old Testament in Exodus 18, Moses uh, being talked to by his uh, father-in-law, Jethro or Ruel, gives him a vision for choosing leaders to help deal with the decision-making, the counseling, the leading of the flock of Israel in the wilderness. And out of that came some principles and means of selection and qualifications that uh, the leadership of the people of Israel used in their cities. Um, as they went through the Babylonian captivity, um, they could no longer worship in the temple, so synagogues were formed, and that's when elders began to be uh, helping to lead in each synagogue. The New Testament church um, pulled from that modeling, and so in various uh, scripture passages in the New Testament, there's a qualification for elders. Um, notice that we use the word elders, not elder. Uh, I have served in denominations in which the only elder in the church was the pastor. I'm very thankful that is not true uh, here in the CNMA and in Bridge Community Church. So we have a plurality of elders, uh, which helps to uh, make the leadership more balanced, more representative of the people within the church, uh, and not a one-man show. So um, there's various categories that are listed there in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1 and 1 Peter chapter 5. Um, it talks about an elder's family life, uh, what that is supposed to be like. One of the questions that people ask is, well, can an elder be a single? And the answer is, yes, an elder can be a single person. Uh, it talks about uh, an elder's relationship to things, uh, addictions, uh, money. And uh, in this day and time, a knowledge of the world and the person is in touch with the issues of the times and the needs of the world. The overwhelming majority of space in the Bible on an elder is dealing with the character. And so I won't list all the character traits, but surely um, maturity person is to be humble and, um, and wise and uh, not proud and just. In terms of relationships, uh, he is to have uh, godly and holy and respectable and be of good reputation. In regards to spiritual life, he is to be holy, devout, um, able to teach and understand the word of God. And usually we have to um, give a little tweaking on the idea of teaching it that they may not necessarily be a public teacher, but they have that pass honorable trait where they what they learn and what they hear, they teach or speak in one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, they are not to be a new convert, and they should have a desire to actually uh, want to be a leader and an elder. Uh, one of the things that is found in the gifts, spiritual gifts listed in the book of Romans is the idea of spiritual leadership. And so one of the qualities that we add to that list of elders is that they have that gift of leading, which means that they can deal with difficult situations, difficult people, make hard decisions when those need to be made, and are not afraid to stand out, uh, nor to disagree with other people. We don't want a board of yes men on the committee on the board of elders, we want people who can think for themselves and can stand up and speak their mind. Another aspect that um, we've not highlighted in the years past, but is becoming more important for our church, is the idea of witnessing and uh, advancing the kingdom. Because of decisions that we're making in regards to ALME, uh, 
planting churches and also our prayer, care, and share emphasis of the last few years, uh, being an active witness for Jesus Christ is something that I believe is important in the aspect because uh, our church wants to be committed to the Great Commission and the mission emphasis of Bridge Community Church. In regards to the church, they are to be examples to the flock. They are to be under shepherds, and I like to uh, emphasize that word under shepherds, that we are all underneath um, the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, and that they uh, are part of the governing board that leads our congregation. They need to have a commitment to the church with their presence, their in the building uh, on a regular basis or during a pandemic. They're at least online watching and participating um, that way. They are giving of their tithes and their prayers and their spiritual gifts are being used within the church. So I think um, I've taken my five minutes that I had for that. well, let me take a few more minutes just to read 1 Peter 5, 1 through 6 from the NLT. Now a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. And I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. And don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. When the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you younger men must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you serve each other in humility. God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. So that's my little devotional on elders for tonight. Thank you for doing that. I don't think we've done that in a, in a while. It seemed like a good year to refresh our memories on that. <laughs> 